Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. Presents Cary Grant as the star of the Ghost Goes West in your Colgate Halo Theater of Romance from Hollywood. Tonight, Colgate Halo brings you one of the most popular stars of the screen and one of the most amusing stories of the screen. Your theater of romance curtain rises on the romance comedy... The Ghost Goes West. And the star is our great favorite, Terry Grant. I'm a goose. No, no, don't get excited. I don't wear a sheet, and I don't say boo to old ladies. And I ne'er rattle a chain in all my days and nights. And I don't like to haunt houses. What do I like to do? Oh, it's all very simple. I like to kiss the bonny lassies. <laughs> Folks, we are bad since call me the Glowery Ghost. But my real name is, was, Mayor Doc Glowery. Now, the reason I'm a ghost is that I made a wee mistake. What do you mean a wee mistake, you scum? Oh, that was my favor. He's way up in heaven. I'm in limbo. That's halfway between heaven and earth. You see, it's, uh, it's because of that uh, wee, wee mistake I made. The uh, hated enemy in my family was the kind of McLagan. I was the last of the kind of glory. There was a fight, and I uh, lost. Tell them why you lost. I, uh... I didn't have my sword with me. Tell them why you lost. I was busy kissing a bonny lass. <laughs> As punishment, I'm in limbo. Never to be welcomed back by my ancestors into heaven. Doomed to haunt the dark halls of Glory Castle until... Until... Tell them. Until I find him a glaggon, twist his nose, make him kneel before me. And make him admit that one glory... I'm fresh, him, I say that. Go find them, you point. But say that. I've been searching for 250 years. Go back to Glory Castle and find them. You snip, John, kill them. And stay away from the bonny lasses. I say that. <laughs> Not serious, Dad. You're really not serious. Not a Scott Castle. <laughs> Picture my competitor, especially a certain Mr. Biglow, when I come back home with a genuine antique castle, no less. But, but it's so old. Certainly, it's got a family tradition. Oh, something we haven't got, huh? All right. I'm a self-made man. Why shouldn't I have a self-made family castle, a real one? Why shouldn't I? Uh-oh. There comes the owner. What uh, what was his name? I can't remember. Donald. I mean Donald Glory. Yes, yes. Hello there, Mr. Glory. Here we are, back again. Oh, uh, how do you do, Mr. Porgy? Uh, Miss Porgy? I, uh, I was hoping you'd come back. And here we are, already with an offer. Mr. Glory, I'm willing to buy this castle of yours, lot, box, and, and, and portcullis. Uh, buy it? Certainly. Well, you said it was for sale last week, didn't you, Peggy? Yes, you did, Mr. Glowry. But I, uh, I have to think it over a little longer. Why? You're broke? Yeah. Well, it's true. Well, come on, speak up. 25,000 cash for Glory Castle. Take it or leave it. Well, you're right. I, I am deeply in debt. I have no choice but to take it. Great, great. Now one thing. Is this castle by any chance haunted? Haunted? Father means, do you have a family, ghost? Yes, yes. Mrs. Porgy, as she's back in New York, she'd never consent to a haunted cat. Well, how about it, young man? Any ghosts or any such tommy rot? I'm, uh, well, I'm not sure. I mean, well, why don't you and your daughter stay overnight and see for yourselves? <laughs> Is it midnight? 
Yes, I, uh, I think it is. Well, uh, I ought to be going in. Oh, no, please. I mean, uh, uh, won't you stay out here and talk to me just a little while longer? Why? Well, you're so very uh, um, interesting. Thank you, Mr. Glower. This hallway is drafty, and I am tired, so good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, Miss Porter. Yes, Mr. Glower. Well, I just want to say that, uh, that, uh, that I hope you sleep well. Thank you. Good night. I didn't know there was a shy man left in the world, Mr. Glower. <laughs> yes? I- is that you, Mr. Glower? All right, all right. Yes, Mr. Glowry, what... Donald! Donald, you're in still. How in the world did you change over so fast? I am not Donald. I'm a goose. What? What did you say? I'm the famous ghost of Glowry Castle. Now that you're supposed to be frightened. <laughs> Nash, what are you laughing about? Donald, you Scotsman aren't supposed to have any sense of humor. Why do you keep calling me Donald? The live descendants, Donald. Uh-huh. I am Murdoch. You are crazy. <laughs> Only about one thing. And what's that? It's a bonny little lassie with a wee bit of a button for her nose. Oh, yeah, no. Well, and I thought you were shy. Shy? What does that mean? Asking riddles, Mr. Glower? Aye, well, that's a thought now. I have a riddle. You must answer before I spell out the word Killy Cranky. Uh-huh. And if I don't? You pay a forfeit. Oh. Here we go. <clears throat> now, what is the difference between a thistle in the heather and a kiss in the dark? T I L I L I do not. You do? Yes. What's the forfeit? A kiss. Oh. What's the answer to the riddle? Lastly, the forfeit always comes first. Does it? Aye. Oh, man. Murdoch! Hey, Murdoch Glory! Oh, lad, did you hear that? Hear what? Murdoch, my son, find the McGluggan on your way. Donald? Donald, what's the matter? Donald, where are you going? Donald? He, he ran away. <laughs> Well, how do you do, Donald? Uh, may I call you Donald? Yes, of course, uh, Miss Porgy. You are crazy. Crazy? And you look wonderful in kilt. Kilt? When was I in kilt? Last night. Was he? I mean, uh, you mean after you went to bed? Donald, Glowry, do you mean to stand there and tell me you don't remember about last night? Oh, I remember everything now. What happened? Why, why did you run away? Didn't you want to forfeit? Forfeit? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. May I, uh... That is to say, may I have it now? You ask that. Oh, I've never met anyone like you before. Well, uh, I've never met anyone like you either. I, uh... I think I like, uh, Americans. Do you? Then you won't mind going with us. With you? Oh, yes, of course. You understood, didn't you, that father was taking this castle back to America. What? Hmm? He's going to take it all down, stone by stone, and put it up again in America. But, but that's impossible. You don't know father. Well, I won't permit it. $25,000, Don. It's, it's desecration. I'll be living in it. Is that desecration, Don? But, but I don't want to go to America. Even if I ask you to? Oh, well, uh, even if I give you some more forfeit things, a kiss? I, uh, I, uh... <laughs> Look, uh, is it true it never rains in California? <laughs> hey there. Hey there, this is Murdoch. What is this strange place? Where am I? Man up, my son. You are on board ship on your way to America. But I don't want to go to America. I don't want to become a confounded colonist. 
You must go, my son. You must go with the old glory castle which you dishonored. You must walk the castle halls, my son. In in America. Oh, oh favor. <laughs> Sit by me. The deck steward moved our chairs. John, in silk again? A bit wind. You'll have a cold by the time we dock tomorrow. Oh, not. I think you're the one I've seen before. What? What did you say, Donald? Would you like to play a game? Donald, uh, are you seasick for something? It's called a riddle. You must answer before I spell the word King Cranky. Donald, not now. Oh, very well. This. You over there with the red hair. John, will you talk to me? Aye, right, this one doesn't want to play. But, Donald, what is So I'll play the game with you. Well, a Scotch wolf. <laughs> no, thank you. Woman, come back here. Well, Mr. Glory, I see I've misjudged you. Oh, you want to play now? All right. What's the difference between a thistle in the heather and a kiss in the dark? G I L. Oh, Donald, Donald, stop that. Are you... I mean, haven't you any feelings in you? I'm not Donald. And of course I've nothing in me. I'm a ghost. Oh, Donald, please. It, it's not funny anymore. I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, I'm the ship photographer. Do you mind if I take a picture of you both? I... Oh, he, 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 the man! He disappeared! He disappeared into thin air! A ghost! There's a ghost on this ship! <laughs> A ghost, I tell you, I saw him myself. He was in the ballroom, on the boat deck, on the captain's table. What's the matter, sweetheart? What's it quiet? Oh, nothing. Really, George, nothing's the matter. Yes, there is. Even while we were dancing, something seemed to bother you. Don't be silly, dear. We're engaged. That proves I love you, doesn't it? Not even when a girl is engaged can she bring herself to tell a man he has a little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. He ought to start using Colgate tooth powder, but quick. You know anyone can be the victim of unpleasing breath? It's happened to thousands without their knowing. Marks them down socially. Hampers their success. Don't let it happen to you. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests prove that Colgate Tooth Powder, in seven cases out of ten, instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And when it comes to cleansing, money can't buy a benefit that will clean your teeth better or quicker than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. And now, Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo bring you the second act to The Ghost Goes West, starring Cary Grant. <laughs> Back. They're big, stone, and you can go back with them. And I can go back. They're paying. I mean... Uh... You heard me. Back you go right away. Mr. Porgy, isn't the suit of the Biglow chains we're going to buy the castle? Biglow? What's that about Biglow? Well, Biglow just told us that he made a deal with his stock. And it looks to me like he's cutting you out. Cutting me out? Nothing. Put this in your printing press. The glory ghost is going to work for the Georgie Porgy groceries exclusively. The Congress of the United States of America has the duty to call the attention of every American citizen to this outrage. So we import a ghost in our progressive country. Shall we allow our spirit to pervade the free air of these United States? Peter, Peter, it's Mad Dog. You hear me? I love Peter. I do not like it here in the colonies. They put up the castle again. They say I'm good publicity. Publicity? What's that? I don't know. 
But they put up big signs all over the castle, saying that the glory ghost prefers to deal with the Georgie Porges grocery. <laughs> what will I do, Father? Revenge, son of Quarit. Be patient and you shall have your revenge. <laughs> Are you sure you have it right? Well, Mr. Porgy, I... Now, just listen closely. Listen closely. At the stroke of twelve, you come out from behind those drapes and say something like this. Georgie Porgy and Guest, I, the glory ghost, greet you most grateful. Georgie Porgy and Guest, I, the glory... Oh, Mr. Porgy, I don't like this at all. Please, Donald, if not for my sake, do it for Peggy. Do you want her father to be the laughing stock of all America? Why, that scoundrel of a competitor, Joe Bigelow, got a whispering campaign going around that there isn't and never was a glory ghost. Bad publicity like that can ruin the Georgie Porgy grocery. Yes, but I don't see how I... It's very simple. Everyone, including Peggy, thinks you've left town. All right. Tonight at that dinner, with all those reporters and Bigelow there, if you appear in your skirt, tell, that's what I said, tell and say a few words and then disappear. Why, well, that does it. Please, Donald, please. This isn't just me, Peggy's father, talking. It's the Georgie Bargy Grocery. Ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> well, I promise I might as well go down and do my ghost thing. Oh, Murdoch, glory, wherever you are, for this masquerading I'm about to do, forgive me. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, I didn't see anything. Donald! Donald, what are you doing? Well, you left it. Oh. You can't see. You're the... the other, Murdoch. Huh. Aren't you afraid of me? Why should I be? We've met before, remember? Yes, Peggy, I remember... That's the very first time you called me by my name. You sounded almost like Donald. Would you rather Donald was here? He's gone. He won't be back. Um, I think you're wrong, Peggy. Why do you say that? Because I know him. He's one of those stupid men who loves a girl and uh, doesn't know how to tell her. If he loved me, he wouldn't have gone away without talking to me. Well, if he were here, what would you say to him? I... I say to him that... That I love her. Oh, he'll be back, Peggy. I promise it. When? When, Murdoch? Uh, uh, when? Later, just a little bit later. Goodbye. I've got an important engagement. Hello. A uh, fraud. That's what it is. A fraud. Don't be fool. You shut up. And you put up. Where's the Georgie Porgy Glory Ghost? Answer me that. Well, he 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 must have got lost somewhere. Why don't you try whistling for him? <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. Uh, the ghost will be here. He just <laughs> look. There he comes now. Huh? Is he a ghost? It's Donald Glory. D- Donald, I thought, well, but you promised. Me. Sorry, Mister Porgy, but I I think the can of glory has had just about enough. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. As the ghost's only living descendant, I think I might as well inform you that the farce is over. There won't be any phantom tonight. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Georgie, poor Jay. You might as well take off that glowery tart and costume you're wearing. By the time these reporters get through with you, you'll wish you had never even seen Scotland. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bigelow, wait. Uh, well, well, well. What is it, young man? That tartan you're wearing. <laughs> well, I have a right to it. I'm a real Scotsman. In fact, I belong to a better clan than you do. Yes, but, uh, Biglow. There's no clan called Biglow. Who said there was? This tartan belongs to the clan of my mother's ancestors, of which I am the last representative. It's the tartan of the distinguished clan of McClagan. Did you say McClagan? Yes, McClagan. And what of it? What of it? Murdoch! Ancestor Murdoch! Did you hear the man? He's from the clan of dragons. Well, what do you mean? What, what, what is this? What, what are you just what? Huh? Turn up your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let go of me. 
Thank you, relative. Now, down on your knees, McCracken. No, 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 my nose. Stop twisting my nose. I will. When you say the one glory can fresh 50 McGlaggen. Anything you say, sir. Say it. <coughs> one, repeat after me. One glory. One glory. Can fresh 50 McGlaggen. Can fresh 50 McGlaggen. Uh, now, check those to the floor. <laughs> Taylor! Taylor! Look! He's doing it! Taylor! Look! Hey! A fiat mason! <laughs> Come to heaven! All is forgiven! Oh, Donald! I saw it all. Did it really happen? <laughs> yes. Now I understand. It was you I met on the stairs a little while ago. You who said you loved me, but didn't know how to say it. Yes, well, I, uh, I know how to say it now. You don't have to. Just tell me the answer to that riddle he asked. What is the difference between a thistle in the heather and a kiss in the dark? Well, I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you laughing? Then you lose. So, please, give me the forfeit. <laughs> oh, Donald. Riddle me another riddle. Quick. Terry Grant, star of tonight's presentation of The Ghost Goes West, will return to our microphone in just a moment. shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For soap shampoos, leave a film on your hair. But Halo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. The very first time you use Halo, you'll notice your hair glistens in all its natural brilliance. The deep, full, natural color and luster comes sparkling through like sunshine through a clean window pane. And remember, even in the hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo quickly carries away loose dandruff, grease, and dirt. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinse because Halo leaves no dulling soap film. Nothing to hide your hair's natural beauty. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Use Halo on your children's hair, too. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Remember, Halo glorifies your hair. So hello, everybody, hello, hello, shampoo, hello. Colgate Tooth Powder for a breathless sweep and halo shampoo to glorify your hair. Thanks, Terry Grant, for his fine performance in The Ghost Goes West. We'll be looking forward to seeing you in Alfred Hitchcock's RKO thriller, Notorious. It was swell to have you on our theater romance tonight, Terry. Thank you, I was glad to be here. Uh, next week, your theater of romance should provide a lot of interest to your regular listeners. Wayne Morris makes his first appearance in Hollywood after a brilliant career in the Naval Air Force. With seven jet zeros officially to his credit. And with him will be Claire Trevor. They will co-star in one of the Warner Brothers' most exciting stories, Kid Galahad. Until then, good night and good listening. <laughs> Bulletin for the future. Next week, Charles Vander's production of Theater of Romance, the Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo, stars Wayne Morris and Claire Trevor in Kid Galahad. This will be followed by one of the most poignant stories ever told, Cradle Song, starring one of Hollywood's most charming stars, Shirley Temple. These presentations of Theater of Romance come to you because of your enthusiastic recognition of Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo. This is your host, Frank Graham, saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>